There's a lot of times we get over to the warehouse and pick out a lot of different types of cars. We've got some Packards and we have some early Fords and early stuff, but I mean, when you come up to a Cadillac, a Cadillac really meant a lot back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. But a lot of these cars that were built after the war, they have a lot, a lot of war history. And just to give you a little bit of an idea, there is no 43 Cadillac. There's virtually not a 1945 Cadillac. And I really hope a lot of people will go ahead and acknowledge the fact that a lot of the American car industry stopped building cars and went right on helping the military building tanks, military equipment, and a lot of stuff that used the Cadillac engines and the Ford engines engines, the GM stuff, and all sorts of stuff. Our hat should go off to them for what they've done. And there's a lot of collectors collect all different types and breeds of cars. Just to give you an idea on producing a car, in 1945, the war kind of ended in 1944-45, Cadillac was able to produce cars. Cadillac produced just a little bit under 1,000 cars in 1945. And this happened to be in 1947. So 1946, Cadillac was able to produce nearly 48,000 cars the very next year. Put these people back to work, put got jobs going on, and it is really just cool to see how America pulled together and did things. 1947, this car's a 1947 sedan at and the sedan head is a two-door, kind of a fastback model car with three back windows in the back of the car. All Cadillac came with V8s. All of them did. And they had the transmission, the hydromatic. The hydromatic transmission really came out and was designed by Oldsmobile. And when Oldsmobile put this transmission on the market, it was absolutely a hit. For you guys that need to know, the year was 1939, believe it or not, when the automatic transmission was originally originated for the American car industry. Cadillac had them in all their cars and it was their big selling point and I mean the transmission guys if you've never driven one we're going to show you a little bit how one shifts later on through the show but these are really just a fantastic car to own and the history behind them is just phenomenal. In 1947 they were able to produce well over 60,512 cars in 1947. That is astounding. People after the war were happy. They were getting jobs. They were flourishing and was the right thing to do for every automaker and they built cars like this and the design of them were so phenomenal they you know weight and size and durability was what they were selling this car has a couple neat features that I love a car is only original once in its life this car is 55,000 original miles the car has been repainted and the seats were done but the drivetrain in the car is virtually untouched when you're working with a car like this you grab the whole complete hood ornament and you pull the thing up like a manly thing to do. You pull it up. Now that's called opening a hood. Back then, people could see what type of car you had in all the makes of cars, all makes and models. Kids with no cars going down the road from a mile away by the type of grill, the size of the grill. And Cadillac was known for quality and weight. It was a status symbol. If you drove a Cadillac, people's heads perked up. A Cadillac, that showed that's a standard of high quality. They all had the flathead V8 engines, most durable flathead motor ever built. But this car here, the options on the car virtually are the hydromatic transmission. It's pretty much, that's all this car really had. Now, if you gals want to know why your moms and your grandmas are pretty strong gals and actually can lift a lot of stuff, these cars didn't come with power steering. And I'm telling you, you go ahead to the Car Guide channel, we're driving this car here around, you got to work that steering wheel a little bit. That's why the steering wheels were about 17 inches around. And today, cars are about 14 inches. Pretty big difference going on. Even smaller, some steering wheels are 13 inches around. You need that leverage to go ahead and turn the car. Every guy that I've ever met in my entire life that's a true 100% car guy happens to have one of these sombrero type hubcaps. And that's really what the nickname was on him because he looked like a sombrero, you know, the Mexican sombrero hat. And every guy had one hanging in the room because they were really, really a cool hubcap. Now, I have had guys ask me, how come I don't put the wide white walls on the car, make some changes, you know. This car right here is actually set up, and the way you guys are seeing this today is really for more, more than one reason. This car here is set up for a movie shoot. I go ahead and I rent some of my cars out for movie shoots and I need some cars to actually be period correct. And then not every car back then had 
Kelsey Hayes wire wheels and wide white walls and all the bells and whistles that go with them. This particular car, we did it period correct by having black wall tires. We actually have radials in this car because the car will be driven during the movie shoot. And we kind of want the car to look just like it would look back in 1947 and the early 50s. Now these cars have a lot of chrome. They had a lot of stainless back then. There was really not too much pop metal. Some of the pop metal would be done in the emblems on the car. 1947 was when Cadillac decided they changed the actual script. The script on the car is written out in Cadillac. The earlier cars actually had block letters. Some of you guys got cars that call them chick magnets. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing. Back in the earlier years, all these guys right here, these were called chick finders. <laughs> There's all sorts of, you see a good looking gal down the road, turn on the light, you kind of wave and smile. But salesmen had them on their cars, and a lot of people had them to find addresses. And addresses is really what the spotlight was originally for. This car happens to have two spotlights, one on the right and one on the left. And that was not uncommon back in the 40s to have them on their cars. And you can control the light where it kind of needs to go. I can't stress enough how much I like the chrome molding and all the trim that goes on in the cars all the way in the, or the, the pre-60s cars. I mean, let's just face it, that's what makes them so unique and that's something that's never been replicated. You see some street rotters try to have other different ways and different plans and I like all the things they do, but nothing beats original and original ideas and original stuff around all the windows. This right here was stainless steel and they went ahead and polished it to put them on. These right here, the stainless steel strips that go all the way down the back of this car are extremely rare and very, very collectible and very desirable. And when Cadillac built a car, they were kind of known for a lot of cars on, I don't want to say hiding the gas caps. It used to be kind of a joke, it used to be a trivia question and stuff on different makes and different models of cars. But believe it or not, if you look in the back, of the, there's no gas cap door on the side of this car. Normally you would think there would be one right here. Certain different years, different cars are different things. And the expense of putting one on, Cadillac and a few other models of cars took that extra step and did something really spectacular and they put it right underneath here. You lift this up like so. Locking gas caps were real early, and by the way, they had locking steering wheels in early Fords and all different makes and models of cars, but locking gas cap, that's what really what they did. The gas cap was hidden behind here, kind of pretty much hidden out that no one can see, no one can find. The guy at the gas station, you know, you get Goober over there, he doesn't know where the gas cap is. So on the Cadillac, the owner of the car had to go ahead and show him, and back then in the earlier years, gas station attendants, they were pretty sharp in a long way. We always teased the Goobers and this and that. These guys had to be trained to do a lot of stuff. They actually checked air pressure, they checked oil, they serviced a car pretty much right on the islands. Sometimes they had contests, three or four guys would be out there, by the time the gas was in the car, almost like a pit stop, and that's where pit stop came in from. But but when they hide the gas caps back here, you had to get one of the guys to know where it would be on the back of the car. Now, Cadillacs today and some other years had were known for huge trunks. In 1947, they were really not a huge trunk automobile. But look at the handle on these. These things here, you grab them, and you turn them, and you open it. And the, the, they're actually a little bit of the weight, and they actually have a locking mechanism right about here. And you can see all the rubber in the car. This is really nice rubber in this car right here. This is spectacular. And they had a little light inside here, which original light would go on when you go ahead and open up the trunk of it. And they had a lot of little features. Now, a lot of cars, that was an expense to have. This particular car back in 1947, this car here sold for $2,200. That was a heck of a price for $2,200. Nowadays, you spend $2,200 on gas in this car going here back and forth to, to Reno. <laughs> Let's just face it. But the trunks are pretty good size, but they kind of ate themselves up with a spare tire. But a spare tire was really, really something you had to have in all your cars back in those years because it was needed. Flats were very, very common because they did not have steel belt belted radials. And cars had tubes in then. Tubeless tires did not really come onto the market until the early 60s that were sold out in the market. But this car reader happens to have a tubeless tire, set it for the rim itself, and there's still enough room back here for golf clubs and whatnot, but not as big as you would, you would think it would be. When I bought this car, I went around it really pretty good when I went ahead and purchased. It's an Indiana title car, and some of the things the dealers used to do, and not too many of them do it today because not a lot of people want, you know, some stickers on the car, but these guys went the extra step. This is actually pop metal. It's actually chrome plated, and dealers would put these on their cars, and it was kind of a pretty good, uh, a pretty good sales tool. And the other thing is, a lot of people really wanted them on their car to show that they bought it from from Grimes. Grimes was a Cadillac dealer called Grimes Motor, and it was in Helena, Indiana. 
If you guys notice that the bars on the back of this particular glass, back in the years of the 40s, it was very difficult for glass makers to do curvature to glass. That's why flat glass for replacement ga glass was safety glass. They actually had a piece of, of vinyl, excuse me, not a vinyl, it's more of a plastic that goes in between the layers of the glass. And when they, that's why you'll get some yellowing and some bubbles in the corners because it was actually the plastic wasn't that good, it wasn't perfected that well. But they had to do flat glass. And the only way to make the curvature to the back of this car that actually had this was to go ahead and put the glass in three pieces. So you're going to have a bar here and a bar here. This is a three window. It's in the back of the car. And it's really kind of cool. It just shows a lot of the year of the car. And later years, they used pretty much the same curvature to the car. And you could get a piece of, of glass that actually had a curve to it. But back then, that's really what, what reason why they did it for the rear and the front. When they had the front had the split in the middle, that was because there's two pieces of flat glass. Now this particular car that does not have the original interior nor the original door panels into it, it's made with kind of a, the original car had kind of a mohair style and then some material. And Cadillac back then, they took the metal that was on the car and they did kind of a wood grain finish paint to it. It's a four step process to do with the wood grain. They primer it. Then they put a base, kind of a tannish to a tannish brown base color. And then they do kind of a dark brown. And then they actually have a little bit of black brown, very painted very, very faintly. And they rubbed it with a type of cheesecloth to go ahead and give the wood effect. Now this right here was redone on the inside window moldings and on the inside door panels. And the dash is done pretty much the same way. If you notice, they got a big chrome grill in the very center for the radio. And the top of the dash was done, like you said, in the, in the wood grain finish. Now the handle for the outside spot mirrors are really kind of cool. When you went ahead and turned the knob like this, the actual, <laughs> the actual light will turn. You, you move it like this, the light turns around. What a neat feature and a neat idea. A lot of people, these were added on. Dealerships put them on, but they didn't come on factory cars. These were all dealer add-on items. Promise you guys a ride in a 1947 Cadillac, so let's go. I'm going to show you one of these transmission shifts. Kind of cool. That's how they shifted in 1947. I said, shake, rattle and roll. I said, shake, rattle and roll. Shake, rattle and roll. Oh, shake, rattle and roll. Well, you never do nothing to save your doggone.